All right, continuing our review of chapters four and five. We are looking at quadratics again. We're shifting to solving them. The first ones say to solve using square rooting. All right, so solve using square rooting. What would we have to do first? Okay, if we divide by four, what do we end up with? So we get x squared being five. Is that a nice perfect one? No. But we can still square root it. Okay? If we square root that, we've got x being plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay? What about the next one? <coughs> if I bring the 9 to the other side, it's now negative. And when I go to square root it, what happens? What do we get when we square root negative 9? Yes, that's where those imaginary answers come in. So plus minus 3i. All right, so that's solving by square rooting. Looking at factoring as a method for solving. The first few here, we're not solving it, we're just factoring it. What can we do first? Yeah, if there's a GCF, you want to pull that out first, okay? So we end up with an x squared minus 8x plus 16. And then how would that factor? So if I don't see that as an option on my multiple choice test, what might I see? Yeah, they might condense it down to show that this has two of the same factors. Okay? All right, I'm going to pause the recording for a second. I want you guys to try the next one. All right, let's check. What did you pull out? Yes, let's take the negative out. We have x squared minus an x minus 20, which then factors into x minus 4 plus 4 and x minus 5. Okay. Now, keep in mind, on your test, things students often forget. The negative 2 that you pulled out is still part of your answer, right? It's one of your factors. Watch carefully when you're selecting your answer because, you know, the option of x minus 4 and, and x plus 5, where my signs are turned around, is probably going to be listed on there, all right? So make sure you're identifying the correct choice. All right. It says when it's a perfect square trinomial, we want to write it as a single binomial squared, kind of like we did in this one here. Okay? We had two factors that matched, so we write it as something squared. Is there anything common that can be pulled out? 4 doesn't go into 49, so we can't pull anything out. So we have to look at factoring it. What would we do with our 4x squared? Okay, so one option is 2x and 2x. Another option might be 4x and 1x, right? At this point, we don't know for sure which one we want. But we're going to try the 2 and 2. All right, we need to split up the 49 how? How do we split up the 49? Okay, signs. All right, does it get me the right middle? I get 14 for inside, 14 for outside. Okay, so since they match, we would write it as 2x plus 7 quantity squared. Okay, go ahead and try the next one. So factoring this, we end up with another perfect square trinomial. So we're getting two of the identical factors, which were what? 5x minus 3. Agree, disagree. 5x minus 3? Okay. All right, our next topic. We can use that factoring technique to help us solve, okay? So first thing to look for is do you have one side equal to zero, okay? Next thing you look for is can we factor the other side? Do we have any GCF that we could pull out? We have an X in this one. If we factor an X out, we have X squared plus 10X plus 21, okay? 
And then can we now factor that quadratic trinomial piece? It factors into what? Okay. So what are my solutions then? X could be... Okay, from here X could be negative 7. From here X could be negative 3. But what about the front X? It could be a 0. So we get three solutions. Yes? And what was the highest power in this expression? 3, right? We talked about that, right? The number of solutions should match the power. In this case, they're all nice real answers. Okay? All right, second one. What can we pull out? An X. All right. Take a minute and factor that trinomial piece. What do we end up with? Multiplies to be negative 16, adds up to negative 6. Negative 8, positive 2? Okay, so my solutions are 0, positive 8, and negative 2. Okay. <laughs> All right, when we have four terms, we've got a cubic that has four terms. We use that grouping technique. This is the one where we split it in half, and we said what's common in the first half? and what's common in the second half, okay? So we're kind of looking for a GCF, but in just parts of it. All right, so for my first half, what could I pull out from an x cubed and a 2x squared? X squared. All right, we're going to factor out an x squared. It leaves me an x plus 2, okay? What can I factor out of the second half of that? Positive or negative? So put the plus sign in there, and then we have x plus 2 left, yes? For grouping to work, the part that's left over has to match, right? So our x plus 2s have to match. Okay. That's going to come down as one of my factors. What's the other part? Can I factor that part anymore, the x squared plus 3? What if it was something like x squared minus 9? Then we could factor it down more, right? Difference of squares. But it's the sum of not even a perfect square. So we can't break it down any further. All right, I'm going to pause the recording. I want you guys to try the next one. All right, what did we take out of the first two? Um, X squared. Okay, we have an X plus 5 left over. What did we take out of the second two? Now, be careful here, because if you pull a negative 4 out, you do have an x plus 5 left, right? The two things we pulled out form one of our factors. Now, this might be an answer choice on your test. Is it your best choice? No, because we can factor this again into what? All right. So that is your best answer. Okay. The cube pattern was something that was newer to you this year. Some of that other factoring you did in um, Algebra 1. This is our cube pattern. You will not be given this pattern on the test. It's something you are expecting you to know. But remember, there is a very similar formula for the minus versus the plus option. So if you memorize the top one, right, we can figure out the other one. All right, so x plus 1 equals x cubed plus 1 equals 0. I'm actually, let's change that to an 8 because it's going to make us talking about it. My board's off again. So, let's think of this as x cubed plus 8, okay? When we factor a sum or difference of cubes, your first step is to figure out what those roots are, okay? So, what is the root of x cubed? Nope. 
The cube root of x cubed is just an x. What's the cube root of 8? All right, and since it's a positive 8, we have a positive 2. Okay? The second part of this is actually a trinomial. Okay? So we did the first part, the x plus, or the a plus b in that case. Then we have the trinomial piece, where we take the first piece, square it. So my x here is going to get squared. Then we times them together. So x times the 2 is 2x. All right, that's the a, b part here. And then we square the second piece. So if we square that 2, we get a 4. Now, when you square something, it's always positive, right? So this last term is always going to be a plus sign. The middle sign is going to be opposite of what you started with. So if we start with a positive 2, we're going to have a negative there. All right? If this had been x minus 2 as the first factor, all right, then we would have had a plus in that position. Does that make sense? That's the only difference in the two formulas. So again, memorize the top one, but just know the patterns so you can get the other one if you need it. Okay? All right. Now, we have that this is equal to 0, right? So we're not just factoring it. We're actually solving this. The first one, the binomial piece, is easy to factor. I mean, it's easy to solve. x plus 2 has to be 0, so x has to be negative 2. But the second part, the trinomial part, you're going to have to use the quadratic formula to solve that. Okay? Quadratic formula. So x equals what? x equals, I'll put it up here, x equals opposite of b plus minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. That's another formula that you're going to be expected to know. All right. I have a question. Yes. How many questions is this final? 50. Holy. That's not terrible for two hours. Yeah, but not just do it there. You can handle 50 questions final. All right. Let's get the quadratic part done. So x squared minus 2x plus 4. We're trying to set that equal to 0. Solving it with the quadratic formula, we are going to have x equals the opposite of b, which is going to be a positive 2, plus and minus the square root of b squared, so we have to take negative 2 and square it, minus 4 times our a value, which is 1, and our c value, which is 4. And then we have to divide the whole thing by 2 times a. All right, so simplifying, we have 2 plus minus a whole bunch of stuff in a square root, and at the bottom, denominator is 2, yes? All right, so let's analyze our square root part. We have negative 2 squared, which makes it a 4. We have negative 4 times 1 times 4, which would be negative 16. Okay. Subtracting, we get negative 12 in the middle inside that square root? How do we square root negative 12? Okay, so the i is going to, the negative is going to come out as i. The 12 we're going to split into 4 and 3, so we get 2 root 3. Okay, so this becomes 2 plus minus 2i root 3 all over 2. But can we divide everything by 2? Okay, so we end up with 1 plus minus i root 3. So again, it was a cubic. We should be getting three answers. We got one here, and we're getting two more here, right? It's just that those two are imaginary, so we wouldn't see them on our graph. Okay? All right, let's keep going, guys. How are we going to start this? What are the roots that I need? Okay, so x minus 3 would be the binomial piece. What's the trinomial part going to be? 
So we square the first one. We times them together. Right? 3 times x. And then we square the 3. What sign do I need in the middle? Okay. So right away I know one answer is going to be a positive 3. Right? I've got that one. The other one we have to use the quadratic to find? Okay. I'm going to pause this. You guys go ahead and finish that up. All right. Let's check. X equals... <coughs> opposite of b, so negative 3, plus minus square root. What's b squared going to turn into? A 9. Okay. Minus, what's 4 times 1 times 9? And 9 minus 36 is going to be? 27. Okay. And at the bottom we have 2a. So we've got x equals negative 3 plus minus negative 27 when we square root. 3i root 3 all over 2. Okay, so two answers here, one more there. All right, next one. These are quartics. Why would we call these quartics? X to the fourth. It's a quartic, right? Think of four quarters, right? We can factor them using the same patterns as we use for quadratics. Yes? So instead of having an x squared that we split into x and x, we have an x to the fourth, and we're going to split it into x squareds. Yes? And then we do the same thing. We need two numbers that multiply to be negative 20 and add up to 1. So we would have positive 5 and negative 4? Can we factor either of those more? Okay. So a difference of squares we can break down further. That would be your final answer. Okay. Now, this one was not set equal to anything. What if I had an equal 0 on the end? We can solve those, right? So this becomes x is a 2. This one gets us x equals negative 2. How about the first one? Yeah, we need both. So x squared would have to be negative 5, right, for that to become a 0. I root 5, yes, plus minus. Okay, so... Four solutions, and it was degree four, right, Cortic? Okay, for this one, what would you do first? Add the 12 over. X to the fourth minus 7x squared plus the 12. Okay. Factoring. We can split up our x to the fourth into x squareds again, right? What do we end up with? Minus 4 minus 3. And we've already done this one in the previous question, right? x squared minus 4 gets me x plus 2x minus 2. I cannot factor x squared minus 3 using nice uh, integer numbers since it's not perfect. So my solutions x could be a negative 2 or a positive 2. And then for this one, x squared would have to be a positive 3, which means x would have to be plus minus root 3. Okay, so really watch. Are you getting ones that are just square roots with no imaginary piece, or are you getting things that have an imaginary part to them? Okay. Still focusing on those quadratics, now we're going to look at graphing them. And we talked, I think it was yesterday, with the transformations, right? When do we shift it left, right, up, down? Did we review that yesterday or the day before? Um, so looking at this first one, what kinds of things have we done to a plain x squared graph? Okay, the negative in front is a reflection over x.
What does the 1 do? Okay, so we're going to go left 1, and then the 3 at the end? Okay. So to actually get our graph, again, if this is a multiple choice test, right, you might see the graphs, you just have to pick the right one. So we know that if it's reflected over the x-axis, it should look like this, yes? Should be upside down. And then we can find one where that vertex point has been shifted left and down, okay? For our purposes, I want you to actually look at what a graph is going to do. A normal parabola has a vertex, right? Our parent function, a vertex at 0, 0. If we put 1 in and square it, we get 1. If we put 2 in and square it, we get 4. And then remember the other side is just the mirror image? Yes? My board would cooperate. Okay, so those are my points. Really bad ones. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip them all upside down, and we're going to move them left and down three. Okay, so let's start with our vertex, because that's kind of a key point. So if I take my vertex, which is at 0, 0, and I reflect it over the x-axis, it doesn't go anywhere, right? But then I have to move it left one and down three, so it's going to land there. Okay? Taking the point 1, 1. If I reflect it over the x-axis, it lands down here at 1, negative 1. And then if I move left 1 and down 1, 2, 3, I land there. Okay? Taking this point up here, 2, 4. I reflect it over the x-axis. Now I'm at 2, negative 4. And I shift it left 1 and down 1, 2, 3. I land there. Yes? So I have the one side of my parabola. I just have to flip the points over, look at their mirror images to get the other side. Okay? All right, describe for me what we've done on this next one. Okay, vertical stretch by a factor of 2, then what? All right, can we have someone besides Bo answer my question? All right, so where is my vertex going to move to? Does stretching it do anything if I'm at 0, 0? No, I stretch it, it's still 0 times 2 is still 0. All right, but then I want to go right 2 and up 1? Okay, that's going to be my new vertex. Yes? I had the point 1, 1 on my original graph. I stretch it. Now it's at 1, 2. And then I move it right 2 and up 1. It's going to land there. And the point 2, 4, if I stretch it, now I'm at 2, 8. And then right 2 and up 1. I land up there. And then just use your symmetry, right, to get your other side. So it should still look like it opens up. It should look skinnier because we stretched it and we shifted it right and up. All right. Our next target, I can rewrite quadratics in vertex form by completing the square. To complete the square, remember we have to add our middle term, b divided by 2, and then square it. We're going to add that quantity to both sides. Okay? So it asks us to write it in vertex form and also to identify the vertex and the y-intercept. Well, y-intercept is actually easier to find with it the way it is. Okay? So let's go ahead and get that part done right now. The y-intercept is the value for y when we put a 0 in for x. Well, if we put a 0 in here and here, what's left? Negative 6. Okay? So go ahead and get that part done right away. Then let's complete the square so that we can find that vertex. So the first thing I'm going to do is get that 6 out of the way. It's not the number I need to have there. So I'm going to add it to the other side. 
Now notice I left a little hole right here because I have to add something to both sides, right, to keep it balanced. And I'm going to add that b over 2 squared. So if I take my b term, which is a 4, right, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And now if I square that, I get back to a 4. So I have to add a 4 to both sides to keep it balanced. Okay. The right side now has turned into something that's a perfect square trinomial. That means it factors into two identical factors. What would they be? Okay. The left side, if I combine like terms, I have y plus 10. Can I subtract the 10 now back over to the other side? Okay. So I have y equals x plus 2 quantity squared minus 10. So think about where we've shifted that. We haven't done any kind of stretch or compression or anything. We haven't flipped it over the x-axis, but we did move it which way? Left two and down 10. So picture taking your vertex, which was at 0, 0, and you moved it left two and down 10, where our new vertex is going to be at negative 2, negative 10? Yes? Okay. All right. We've already done the quadratic formula on a couple, so I'm going to skip this question if that's okay with you guys. Are we okay with quadratic? Okay. A basketball player throws the ball at the basket, and its projectile motion follows this equation. H of t equals negative 8. That should be t squared. There's a typo there. 8t squared plus 20t plus 4, where t is the time in seconds, and h of t is the height in feet. Will the ball ever reach a height of 20 feet? Now, it says to use the discriminant. The discriminant is this part, right? That piece that's under that square root symbol. Okay? So b squared minus 4ac, that is our discriminant. And the reason we can answer this question is they're just saying, can I reach a height of 20? Yes or no? Well, what happens if this is negative, if this discriminant is negative? Then we're trying to take a square root of a negative number, which gets us those imaginary solutions, right? Which means if my discriminant's negative, I don't even have to keep going, right? I can say right away, I'm not going to reach that height. If my discriminant is positive, then I know I'm going to get solutions, and I know I'm going to be able to get to that height, okay? So the one thing you have to remember to do is you need to put 20 in for your height. You're, you're trying to figure out, can I get to that height, okay? So our equation now becomes 20 equals negative 8t squared plus 20t plus 4. But in order to use that quadratic formula, or even a part of it, the discriminant part, we have to have one side equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract my 20 to the other side. And now I've got my a, which is negative 8, b is 20, c is negative 16. So now I can dump them into that discriminant. Okay, so I'm going to have 20 squared minus 4 times negative 8 times negative 16. <coughs> well, what's 20 squared? 400. What's going to happen when we take a negative times a negative times a negative? We are going to get a negative answer, right? So 4 times 8 is? 32. What's 32 times 16? 112? 512? Okay. So what's going to happen if we take 400 minus 512? 
It's going to be negative. So we are not going to get to that 20 feet, right? All right. Some operations with complex numbers. Remember when we simplify things that have i squareds in them? We have defined i squared to be negative 1. Right? i is the square root of negative 1. So if we square both sides, i squared equals just a regular negative 1. So when you FOIL or do things where you create an i squared, you have to convert them. Okay? So if we were to FOIL this out, 2i times 3i gets me. Okay? Outsides, 2i times negative 2. Okay? Insides? Positive 15i, and last. Okay, now, we want to combine like terms. I see a couple that have an i on them, so I could put those together. But what's this 6i squared going to turn into? Yeah, because the i squared is negative 1, so 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. And negative 6 with a negative 10 gets me negative 16. The, four, the negative 4i plus the 15i would get me a positive 11i. Okay. Questions on that one? All right, go ahead and do the next one. All right, foiling. You should have 6i squared. Outside gets us negative 3i. Inside, negative 8i. Last gets us a 4. Yes? So combining this, which we think of as negative 6, with the 4 gets me a negative 2. Combining the i's, I get negative 11i. Yes? We okay with that part? All right. We've done something similar to this. How would we break up a negative 75 if we're trying to square root it? So we actually are going to think of it as negative 1 times 25 times 3, right? We have to deal with that negative. And the negative comes out as an i. The 25 comes out as 5. And the root 3 stays in. All right? All right, classifying. Just a quick review. I've given you the charts. If you are classifying by degree, 0 degree is a constant. 1 is linear. 2 quadratic, 3 cubic, 4 quartic, and 5 quintic, okay? So this one would be classified by degree. Since the power is a 3, we would say it is cubic, okay? This one, if we were classifying by degree, we would say it is quartic, okay? If I were classifying it by number of terms. We have the term monomial, binomial, trinomial. Anything above that we just said polynomial, right? Or might say polynomial with five terms, polynomial with eight terms, things like that. So this one has one, two, three pieces. So it is a trinomial. This one has how many? How many pieces? Four. So we would say it is a polynomial. All right. I can write a polynomial equation from its zeros. Remember that the zero is always going to be the opposite sign of what was in the factor. Okay? For example, if I had factors of x plus 5 and x minus 2, you would tell me my zeros would be negative 5 and positive 2, right? Opposite signs. So if I have zeros at 1, negative 1, and 5, my factor for that one would have to be x minus 1. My factor for that would have to be x plus 1. And my factor from the 5 would have to be x minus 5, right? Signs change. 
Now it's a matter of just foiling it out. I would foil these first two together, right? Because x plus 1, x minus 1, what's going to happen? Middle's going to cancel out. We end up with x squared minus 1. And now we can foil that along with the x minus 5. What do we get for first term? x cubes. Outside gets us. Okay, somebody else inside? And somebody else. Last term. Okay. Questions on that? Are we okay skipping the next one? Since we're on short. You can try it on your own if you want. You should get x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12. All right. Last page. We've got four minutes left. I can calculate zeros, maximums, and minimums using my calculator. This is the one where we go in and we type in y equals, right, our y equals key. We type our equation in, and then we go to second trace. We use those two keys. It gets us the calc menu, right? Do you guys remember doing this? Okay. You have to set bounds, right, left bound, right bound. Okay. We will review synthetic division. I'm going to put your solutions up here. You guys can um, try them tonight. All right. You should get a zero at negative 1.939. You should get a relative maximum at negative 0.893, 7.052. And you should get a relative minimum at 0.56 and 3.985. Okay? All right, so you can check those tonight. The last piece, that synthetic division only works when what we're dividing by is nice and linear, right? Otherwise, we have to do that long division technique. For synthetic, when you go to pull out the front number, you always have to switch the sign. Think of what makes it zero. So if I'm dividing by x minus 2, I'm really going to put a 2 out front. Yes? Okay. Then we list our coefficients. 1, 3, negative 4, and 5. We're just taking our numbers from here. Okay. We bring down our first term. We times these and write it up here. Okay, so 2 times 1 gets us 2, and then we add the columns, which makes a 5. And then we just keep repeating that. So 2 times 5 is 10. Adding them, we get a 6. 2 times 6 is 12. Adding, we get a 17. And what you have to remember is that this is your remainder. Okay, then work backwards. This would be my constant. This would have my x's, and this would be my x squareds. So my answer is going to be 1x squared plus 5x's plus 6 plus 17 over what I was trying to divide it by, which was the x minus 2. Okay? The last thing to be aware of is if you are missing a term, you would have to put zeros in, right? So we would have to set it up like that, okay? This will go in Schoology, so if you want to go back and look at any of it, you certainly can. <laughs>